Stingy relative accused me of stalking and publicly shamed me because she was jealous with my writing career. This is something that happened to me about four years ago. A relative and I are both self-published authors in our community. Prior to these events, in middle school, I had begun a story that was well into over 600 pages at the time. The computer I used back then was really old. It was a Windows desktop and tower that needed the 3.5 hard disks to save things to. It had been my aunt who used it for her college classes. It ended up crashing, and I ended up losing everything I had been writing. After tossing the computer away, I subsequently lost interest in writing. I was around 12 to 14 at the time and buried the idea in my mental files for years until just before these events took place. In terms of relatives, we got along well and were really close as kids. Though we had our petty, childish fights, she was always trying to boss the rest of us around. If she didn't get her way, then she would whine and cry, twisting what we said around to play victim to the scuffs and arguments she started. Growing up together, she and I are the two eldest of seven grandchildren. We later found out that her birth father, who passed away when I was six, had an affair with a woman he originally intended to marry while being with a relative's mother. She had gotten pregnant with a relative half-sibling we never got to meet. She was the outgoing type of person, and I, being the eldest of the seven kids, have somewhat been the shy, wallflower kind of person, the type that is easily forgotten and overlooked. I was gullible hanging on to my relatives with every word. We shared similar hobbies gaming, collecting trading cards, etc. She and I also loved to draw. And I, at the time, had started keeping a portfolio of my drawings, began taking art classes, and began writing poetry in my English classes in high school. She approached me at some point about drawing up some characters for a novel series she had wanted to do. Naturally, I was curious about it seeing as we had often acted out several of our book fantasies playing in the yard outside before as kids. She explains to me that she would pay me for the services, and at the time, I had not been taking digital commissions. Back then, I only did freehand sketches for about $15 to $20. This didn't set well with her when I brought up my payment prices, and she dropped the subject. This happened on multiple occasions, and I ended up dismissing the whole thing after some time. I figured out after the multiple encounters with her that she never intended to pay me and instead wanted my draw and character art for free because we were family. This was a no-no, and I knew that just because we're family means nothing. I've since adopted something her birth father used to say, family discount. You get charged double. A few months pass by, and she begins bragging to me that she's found and hired a book editor online and is currently in the process of self-publishing her own books. I tell her that it's pretty cool, and this moment sparks new inspiration in me to pick up my old writing from middle school. After this encounter, I spent the next few days poring over my online profiles to find some of the chapters of my original works, having forgotten about posting them to see what others had thought. Finding them and now having an up-to-date computer system, I saved what I could find on my laptop. I rewrote the first several chapters to fit my current mindset from my teenage way of thinking back then. I end up with well over 130 pages of what ends up being the starting point of my first book in a planned series. Over the years, I talk with my relatives less and less as she puts out more novellas. The news of me writing my own books doesn't sit well with her. At this point, her attitude starts to change, and instead of being supportive, she decides to talk down to me as if she's somehow superior because she has published a few books. I let it slide for the time being and brought up the fact that I had worked out a cover for my book as well. She asks to see it and scoffs in my face and loudly rolls her eyes while she's shopping at my workplace, of which I won't post for ramifications. She attempts to antagonize me further by stating that she used a cover site for her books. One that let you use free stock photos, most of which were poor quality and others of better styles placed behind a paywall. I knew of the site and told her as much. Relatives go as far as to say that if I wanted a real book cover, I should use the site. I tell her right away that my cover is real and that I did it myself. I'm on the clock and realize that we had been standing around talking for too long by then, and we go our separate ways. I don't hear back from her for several more months until she starts handing our family copies of her latest book which is an amalgamation of short stories. To my expectation, only one story I ended up liking was in a small 100-page booklet. She gives my sister, mother, aunts, and myself all a copy and asks us when we had the time to go online and leave a review of what we really thought of the book. About a month or so passed, and being busy with work, I set the book aside as I had honestly never cared much for my relative's writing style. In the past, 95 of everything she had written was deliberately drawn out or was obviously taken from something we had collectively watched or played in the movie or game. It turns out that this situation was no different. In my review, I stated as much, 
asking that she be careful that a lot of the content was easily identifiable from certain big gaming corporations that make a huge chain of fantasy games. I was not alone in seeing this, as other people commented on this note having read her current books at this time. Seeing my post, she wasn't having any of it. Immediately, she starts spewing that she would sue me for libel and threatens me with a lawyer for posting the review that she had asked for. I held nothing back as I called her out for her inflated ego. Over the next few days, I waited to be served with a court date, but nothing came of it, and I thought it had been over. I go about finishing up my own book, and on Christmas, I give my aunt a copy for free as a gift. We found out later that this same relative had charged our aunt for two copies that she had not received yet. My book was literally three times the size of the relative's book for the same price. Seeing my book, my relative gets up with her family and storms out of the party hosted by said aunt. After this, my relatives started avoiding me at work, online, and in public. I'm completely fine with this until someone who knows my relative comes up to me at my job and shows me a website. Turns out that it was said to be a relative's website promoting her online content. Lo and behold, across the top of the webpage, in a small black banner, was my name, demanding I stay away from her. This webpage was completely open to the public, and anyone who could search the contents would see it. I'm mad at this point, and then my phone dings with messages. Looking at it, I see that a person I don't know has forwarded me a series of screenshots of a long conversation between themselves and my relative. It's nearing my break for lunch, so I decide to wait and read them then. Going through each exchange between the two, I realize that my relative is talking about me and what transpired on another platform for not loving her book and not giving her the rave review. My relative calls me a stalker to this person whom I shall not name, and outright admits to giving out my personal information online in this same string of messages. The last post from this person to my relative told her that what she was doing was wrong and childish. She gave out people's personal information and called someone a stalker for simply using the Yahoo email provider. The commenter went on to say that they would be screen shooting the exchange and leaving a complaint with the site moderators. Since this has happened, I've found a complaint forum and posted this to hopefully stop my relative's care and like entitled antics. I'm happy to say that as of this post, my relative's site has been terminated and left to expire. Multiple people have come forward, having been treated the same way as myself by my relative in seemingly the same situation. I'm also happy to say that she no longer shops at my current workplace. At least that's something I'm aware of. The best part of all this is that all of the characters my relative asked me to draw for free are set in my book series protected by copyright law. I still have their original concept art in my portfolio, so she can no longer use them in any way. Following the above events with regards to a relative, I stopped going to any and all social gatherings where I knew she might turn up. These included family get-togethers, holiday outings, birthdays, Thanksgiving, Christmas parties, etc. If we were asked to come over to an event with aunts or other family before I had even moved from my desk or bed, Sometimes I would ask if this particular relative would be there. If they said yes, then I refused to go or would say I didn't feel good. If it were to go out to eat, I would ask that they bring me something back instead of going simply to not be around a relative who called me a stalker. I went so far in avoiding my relative that I blocked all social media accounts I knew she had at the time. I also blocked her brother's accounts, her sister's accounts, her father, mother, and any extended family on the off chance. So they might have even the slightest of chances to contact me. This even included blocking people on various social platforms that had the same name as my relative on the off chance that they might be her. She had multiple accounts and still does. Two years ago, another of my aunts passed away from COVID in Montana. We had to ship her remains back to Virginia for a funeral. This would be the first time this relative and I would be in the same room in over five years since her comments about me stalking her. Instead of going to the graveyard with the rest of the family, I set off in the vehicle to again avoid having any contact with relatives. We leave early, and we don't hear anything for a long time. That is, until the end of February 2024 this year. Aunt, to whom I gave my first book, contacts me at work saying that this very relative lost everything in a house fire. She expects me to give her sympathy. Instead, I find myself laughing that my relative finally got her karma after seven years. Mind you, in the time between aunt's funerals and relatives' house fires, my family and I have moved three or more regions away. And it's now over an hour's drive to even be in the same town as this relative. After our exchange, my aunt's defending relative, and I posted online on Facebook about how karma had finally been dished out. I go about my day feeling the best I've felt in a long time. The evening comes around, and I get off work. Go home and play video games online until bedtime, around 10.30 p.m. I lay down, and my phone notifications start going off. 4, 5, 6, 
7 notifications from nearly 5 hours prior to me laying down to sleep. We have bad reception, so notifications didn't come through when they had originally been sent. I go to check them, and they're from the relative I spent the last 7 years avoiding everything to do with. I laugh more and go to try and reply back but she's already blocked me. She had used an account I was not aware of or missed to contact me after 7 years, saying that I stalked her. To leave 7 comments about how I was a shy person for not fondling over how she was in a bad place and helping her out. For her to have even seen my post to start with, a relative would have had to deliberately type my name into the search bar. Then she found my account in a drop down list, clicked my profile, and scrolled down. She deliberately commented on my post instead of leaving it alone. It makes me wonder how many times she's clicked my name or how long, throughout the last 7 years, she's been watching my account. Which one of us is the stalker now? A desperate alcoholic broke into her mountain house over the weekend, scolding me for changing the lock. This is a weird story that just happened over the weekend. So, Saturday night, the missus and I are lying in bed trying to go to sleep when I hear some noise from the back door. The storm door opens and slams shut. I'm not fully asleep yet, so I put on pants and a shirt I can find and grab my trusty shotgun. We move to the mountainside, and most of the area is still wooded. Living in such a condition, wild animals are an issue. We have bears, coyotes, raccoons, and bobcats, to name a few. So, as I'm moving to the back door, I hear a window break in the back garage. I look out and see someone breaking into my garage. I scream for the wife to call the sheriff's office. Around here, 911 doesn't work well for breaking in. We are connected with a couple of counties, and it gets confusing for them. We get a quicker response by calling them directly. I'm now in go mode, thinking some meth head is trying to score some tools for some quick cash. I got out of the house and noticed this person's truck was still running. I did the only thing I could think of and took the key out of the truck put it in my pocket, and waited for the deputies to show up. It took them 20 minutes to show up. One was state police, and the other was a local sheriff deputy who was doing radar 10 miles up the road. My wife and I know them both. With my gun in hand, I told them someone was in the garage, and I haven't approached it yet, but here's the key to the perp truck. They go in, shoot, and deal with the situation. The dude was passed out on an old bench seat for an old truck I have by the tool bench. They wake him up and arrest him with little to no issues other than him screaming profanity at them. They told me that I could press charge and come in on Monday to file the paperwork. He's not getting out anytime soon since, on top of his breaking in, he's being charged with a DUI. Yesterday I spent the day traveling trying to fix the window that he broke since there are no stores that are open Sunday in my local area. While on my travels, I'm fuming at the fact that I'm having to do this repair on a piece of junk door from the 70s. My wife was telling me to maybe let him go with a warning, but I'm having none of it. So, this morning, I went to the sheriff office. The same deputy was there that arrested the perpetrator, so I asked him how the ride with the dude was. This is the version the officer gave me. Officer why did you break into the garage? Perp I was trying to get my stuff back, but someone changed the lock. Officer you know they purchased that place from Kevin two years ago, right? Perp what? That doesn't give them the right to change the lock without telling me. Officer hmm, yeah, they can. You ain't been in that house for like four years. And I was the one who got you out of that house because you beat the hell out of your old lady. That's twice I get to arrest you on the same property, perp. But he shouldn't be entitled to change the locks, though. Where else am I supposed to go? We purchased the property from Kevin, who's a school board member and gave us a decent deal on the property. He had the property as a rental for his nephew for a few years. When his nephew started walking in his dad's footsteps by getting drunk and beating his girlfriend at the time, he evicted him from the property two years before we purchased it. When he evicted him, he emptied the garage of all scrap metal. He found that out Sunday morning when his uncle paid him a visit in jail. Kevin had other renters on the property after, and he sold it to us because he didn't want the responsibility of it anymore. He's being charged with trespassing, criminal trespassing, breaking and entering, driving under the influence, and property damage of less than $500. So it's been a little while. I didn't have a chance to meet with Kevin last Thursday since I was damn near the day dealing with the police who decided to just bring the attorney who's going to be prosecutor for this case. He was very impressed that I still had all the original receipts for all the tools due to last year's court case. All they would tell me is that because of how many tools he had access to steal, he would be charged with criminal trespassing, breaking and entering with malicious intent, and attempted grand larceny. Which all makes sense. He would not comment on the possible DUI charge. He just asked for the footage of him driving in and showed me taking the key out, backing up the story I told the original officer. They were pretty happy with the evidence and said I should be able to get $500 for the damage done to the door as restitution. As for Kevin, we had coffee yesterday, and he spilled the beans on his nephew. I asked him if his nephew was the reason he gave us a good deal on the property, 
and he said no. He felt most of the properties around here were too expensive and was excited about what my wife was bringing to the school, and he wanted to make sure she wasn't going to struggle while living here. I'm still doing all kinds of work on the house since it's all pretty much a 70s 80s type setup. When the nephew was arrested, he was put into the drunk tank and used his phone call to call his uncle. He was still so drunk that the officer had to get his number. He then told Uncle Kevin, get your ass down here and bail me out right now. Kevin responded with I'll see you in the morning son. So Sunday morning, he went there to have a little chat. So, since he was evicted after his arrest, he skipped town before his court case of assault and battery. His other cousin bailed him out and had skipped out on his bail. His cousin lost $750 on his bail, but it doesn't end there. He asked him what he did to support himself. He wheeled and dealt, as he put it. He worked a few cash construction jobs and a farm job. To get this, he admitted to going back and stealing tools, materials, and parts to sell them in three states. He's been to West Virginia, Kentucky and North Carolina. He ended up getting decent at locating parts and selling them. This is the twist. One person approached him because he was looking for a couple of blocks and transmissions. He was offering $5,000 for those parts. Then he remembered that he had those exact parts sitting in his old garage in Virginia, and he was going to get them. He doesn't remember Saturday evening that well. He just remembers trying to use his key, and it didn't work on the house. He then noticed the door in the garage and tried to get in there since it never had a lock, but I found one that works. That's when Kevin broke the news that, after a month of him skipping town, he cleared everything from the house and garage. I brought it in a dumpster from scrap metal and got $850 for all the metal found in the garage. So he asked him what he would do with the money. He said he approached his other nephew to reimburse him for the bail money, but the nephew declined and offered it to his now ex-girlfriend. This boy lost his patience on his uncle and demanded he put up bail money. Then he asked if his truck was still at my place, and he said no state police had it. He turned white as a ghost. The plates he has on the truck are stolen tags from North Carolina. He has no driver's license. He asked him if he was in trouble in any other state, and he said he didn't know. After he would score, he'd skip town. Kevin gave all that information to the attorney, allowing them to possibly check any other state or city for an open investigation on theft. On Thursday, he demanded a bail hearing, and it should come as no surprise that the judge denied any bail whatsoever. I asked Kevin what happened to the ex-girlfriend. After the nephew was arrested, he went to visit her and wanted to make sure she was going to press charges so that the nephew might be able to get sober and get his life straight. He told her not to let her nephew on the property and he was going to give her a couple of months rent free to figure things out. She ended up moving to Harrisonburg with her sister. She had a pretty terrible upbringing, and her sister was now able to help her. They grew up in Elkin, West Virginia, and both tried to leave nastiness. Sister ended up getting better with education. She just tried to hook up with the first guy that could take her out of town. He hasn't spoken to her in three years, so that's pretty much all the information he had on it.